Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and welcome to the course Decoding Comic Studies and Reading Graphic Narratives in 21st Century India. So slowly and gradually we are uh, moving towards the end of the course. However, I am very excited to, to, to bring something new for you, right? So as uh, the course title suggests, right, Decoding Comic Studies and Reading Graphic Narratives in 21st Century India. So what I kept in my mind, one, that how are we going to decode the very idea of a comic studies, what are the concepts that conceptualized decoding comic studies, what are the discourses that produced comic studies and how comic studies had challenged other discipline or how other discipline have collaborated with uh, comic studies. And we also looked at certain graphic narratives, right? We looked at how to read them, what are the things that, how they are very much like a literature, right? And now today in this lecture, we are going to see how comics have been received, talked, discussed, debated, produced, reproduced, consumed in India, right? So as we know, the certain challenges uh, that comic faced outside of India, India will not be an exception because of uh, the cultural, political, linguistic diversity taken into the account. It is really very tough task to understand what comics is all about, how Indians have understood comics or what comics has offered to Indians, right? So, as a st Indian student, if, if uh, Indian students are listening to this, so for them, they must be having also certain concepts or certain ideas about Indian comics, right? So, there are, let's say, linguistically, I am not saying, but I am saying that in the maximum languages, comics have been produced, right? I, I'm, I come from a Hindi belt land, where I see that there are n number of comics produced in Hindi. Obviously, English we have noticed it, but there are other languages as well in which comics have been produced. Now, the point that I am making is how, like, is it not a difficult to map uh, uh, the, uh, it is not difficult to map uh, the origin of a comics in a different languages or to understand that how it was produced or how people have received the comics, right? So, when we are getting into uh, uh, Indian uh, context, so we have to keep certain factors uh, in mind. So, because you know that even in the Europe where linguistic diversity is not much, even there, or let's say America, even there it was very difficult to define what comics is. So, therefore, our attempt should not be to define comics but rather to see what comic offers to us or what we are going to offer to the comics. All right, so with this context, all right, what I'll do, I'll keep explaining to you and two things. Remember that when we are reading anything, we must be aware of the context in which the a work of art is being produced. So let's say, for example, when so far we have been looking at, let's say, Batman or let's say, Dark Knight Returns, let's say, for example, or watchmen, we were aware of the morality, cultural morality and political conditions of America or the British and therefore it had to say something new, it has to say something different and if we don't know the conditions in which it was produced, political and cultural, it will be very difficult for us to understand or map these American uh, comics. In the same way, when we are coming to Indian, obviously it has to go with Indian morality, cultural approval and obviously 
uh, political legitimacy right so uh, keeping these in the mind let's uh, uh, go to the first slide now and you see on your first slide as i have kept the title history of a comics in india right what i mean by history of a comics in india when i'm saying that i have uh, placed a history of a comics as a title on your slides you see history means i am going to look at the origin right i am going to look at the origin of a, uh, 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 of a comics but remember when i am saying history i am not using history in a very conventional and traditional sense but rather i am using it as a genealogy right which means that we are going to look at in a different networks what comics has to say so rather than looking at the chronologically which came first and why it came first this is not the way we literature people study history right so history has also evolved so i am uh, I, I just told you so that we be aware of the context in which we are going to speak about history of a comics in india all right so now you look at the first slide and see that uh, uh, I mean this lecture that has titled uh, history of a comics in India it will cover the basic history of a comics in India probably we are going to look at uh, from 1860s to the present day right obviously I am not going to tell you about the printing press and all and I am sure that you already know about it right so what we are going to do we are going to see the uh, uh, history basic history of a comics from 1860 to the present day and that will traversing through three stages of a development with a new genre added in every stage right so keep in the mind uh, three uh, sorry uh, i have a very poor handwriting three stages right and each stage what you meet a new genre right so it draws on the observation of scholars like let's say for example let me write some scholars name for you john lent and then we have uh, uh, let's say uh, jeremy stall and among others for a more critical analysis of the individual work draws on the writing of a scholar uh, like P.K. Nair, E. Dawson Vergish, and Carlin Maclan, among others. After listening to this lecture, your idea about comics as well as uh, comic studies in India will become very clear, right? So, in adding to these names, in fact, one of my research scholars, uh, Diptrup Ghos Dastida, has extensively worked in comic studies and he has written also a paper on indian comics and i'm sure that if you get time browse it and it will be very useful in fact uh, in shaping this entire uh, lecture of mine he was uh, very instrumental in helping me out right so we both work together to uh, to bring out this uh, uh, lecture series for you so it is just a suggestion like along with the other names you can read dip Roop's work as well right so you see when i see uh, uh, what is Indian comics, right? So, India has a diversity in language and culture uh, like uh, no other country of her territorial vastness has that I have already talked about it that the way India is diverse, it's really uh, very difficult for us to map the history of a comics in India because if you look at from the north to the south, from east to the west, it has extreme uh, diversity in terms of a culture, cuisine, custom, so on and so forth. So, therefore, we have to keep in this mind that's a really very challenging task for any particular scholar to map the history of uh, uh, comics in India, right? When we say India, obviously, we mean by north to the south, east to the west, but uh, we all know that they all have a very different way to produce a work of art all right so let's uh, uh, go back to the slides keeping this uh, context in mind so what we see uh, this accounts for a major difficulty in actually uh, trying uh, trying to create a singular and linear history of a comics 
in the subcontinent simultaneously offering a pertinent question as to whether it is a wise, hopeful or utterly foolish to make such a homogeneous timeline, right? Is it, uh, is it, is it is possible to bring a homogeneous timeline, right? So, to address the cultural and creative output of a country to ethnologically and linguistically heterogeneous. There are multiple histories running parallel to each other like Hindi comics, Bengali comics as I said that, as I said that it is not like only comics are available in English or in Hindi. If you look at other languages, you will see that comics are available. So, Bengali comics, Tamil comics, Telugu comics, Malayalam comics, so on and so forth. This issue of historifying comics in India is clearly problematized by this linguistic and cultural diversity. So, regardless, I mean, despite the lack of any department uh, dedicated to research on comic studies in India, some people have tried to unify all these parallel histories to frame one singular history of Indian comics. In doing so, inclusion of some major name has also led to the exclusion of others, thus creating intentional gap in history, right. So, here you see Raj comics. Let me write it now name for you and I am sure that even myself I have read this one, this one, this one, this one, right in my childhood, this one, Telani Ram and all. So, if you see <coughs> most of the figure that you see on your screen, right, uh, Dhruv, Nagraj and all, you must be very familiar with these uh, iconic figure, right. The moment you see them, you like I am sure that be all over uh, at one point of time of a fan of a particular uh, hero, right. In fact, we wanted to dress ourselves like a particular person. I remember like I have been telling in that my school days, I used to uh, hide my comic book in my notebook so that uh, no one can uh, see that I am reading it. So, Raj Comics is definitely one of the biggest comic book houses in India, which publishes comic even now, right. But there is no research yet on the cultural impact it has had on school children or even adults from the 1980s up until the present. Neither is there any research and archiving available or rare RC issues or individual character in the Raj comic universe. This is just one instance and there are many. So, see, I am sure that uh, I just talked about my experience when I showed you this screen. I am sure that you can also recall your experiences, right? And the desire and uh, negotiation to read this book with our free times so where no one can see and there is only one or two books available and we all are fighting for one thing. But the question is, Unfortunately, there is not a voluminous work available that what this comic did to us, right. So, there is a research gap which as a serious student of a comic studies, if we want to look at Indian context, we should pick this up, right. So, I mean in English department, there are people who are working, but unfortunately, they are only concentrating themselves on English comics, right, a comics written in English. However, what about the comics written in Malayalam or let's say Bengali? How are we going to do research on this? And this is why I am pushing you all to do something, right, to work on these issues to see the cultural impact these uh, comics had on us, right. So, moving to the next slide, right. So, what you see here uh, that uh, let us uh, take into the consideration some uh, major introductory resources available for studying the history of a comics in India. So, now here we have someone very known uh, uh, author John A. Lent uh, made about 70, 78 strips, right, as you can see, uh, 78 strips to various countries in Asia over a span of uh, 
50 years which means from 1960 to 2000 so what it becomes 50 years in order to record the range of a comic being produced in the eastern hemisphere so he was more concerned on looking at eastern hemisphere right all right now moving to the next we have uh, i mean the result of which has uh, right, the result of which was his uh, book asian comics and that came out in 2015 so here are my suggestions to you that if you are uh, going to read asian comics right you can read john a lent's asian comics and you can contextualize your work right you see like look at look at the figure itself you will see that they all are representing different different uh, places right so this is a very useful uh, uh, for you if you want to know about the asian comics so there is a chapter in this book which is currently the only definitive history of comics in india so Lent has interviewed the major pioneer of Indian comics including we have uh, Anantapai right and then we have uh, Pran right as you could see Chacha Chaudhary and Sabu and then we have uh, PKS Kuti right and then we have Abid Shurti and others and they have drawn a rough sketch of the major artist and publishing houses explaining on a surface level how the comic scene has unfolded in India. As a single chapter Lent has wrapped up as much as he could unable to delve deeply into individual histories or minor artists and has also not been able to include indigenous comics using folk and tribal art forms right although uh, his work uh, deserves the credit uh, for the revealing details it has recorded about the transition from gotham entertainment group to liquid comics and inside into vivalo comics also pointing to source like caroline mclean which has stopped publishing now and talked in uh, length about the campfire comics right which have been left unseen under the giant shadow of Amar Chitra Katha, right? I am sure that you all are familiar with it. So, uh, right, if you see uh, Amar Chitra Katha or let's say uh, uh, other uh, uh, stories that was uh, meant for uh, children where the purpose of uh, this kind of series was to develop the moralities right to develop the moralities or a kind of a pedagog it, it serves a pedagogic purpose right and so in this pics also you see the kind of a cartooning or let's say comic like almost like a comic medium where there's a lettering available like the word images are available and something is shown to you so that you can read right so keep this in the mind and let's uh, go back to the slides again so if you look at the slide what you see that uh, the routeless companion to comics 2017 right this is the one uh, that we have uh, that came out in 2017 has a chapter by jeremy stall titled indian comics right so i am writing the name and if you are interested i would suggest you that please read jeremy uh, stall indian comics right so please uh, get this book if possible and read uh, his uh, uh, contribution in which he draws on lent and his own experience in india to document some details of the comic con event uh, comic con events a very famous one which uh, started in 2011 in new delhi right and then he adds uh, name of the some contemporary publisher like Meta DC Comics, right? You see, Meta DC Comics and comics like The Itch You Cannot Scratch, right? The Itch You Cannot Scratch by Sumit Kumar, right? Sumit Kumar, and then we have anthologies like uh, Dragon Shoe, 
right <coughs> began shu by students of jadavpur university and the two volume of the obliterary journal by bluffed publication right by bluffed publication an important mention in the article is alok sharma's documentary project chitra katha right chitra katha uh, indian comics right so here you see uh, that uh, indian comics that is a beyond balloons and panels in which sharma tries to trace the history of indian comics through the lives of the artist by showing personal interviews with the uh, likes of let's say abit surti i i named few pran anand pai gulsar rai gulsar rai is known for a diamond comics anupma sinha and many others while some names are new some others have to be excluded right so this is uh, not possible to have the entire corpus of indian comics mentioned in one place without exclusion and we know about the problem of a blending individual histories just for the sake of homogeneity and the one book that was uh, produced by p k nair the indian graphic novel nation history and critique uh, finds an interesting way of escaping this problem he deals specifically with the indian writing in english right indian writing in english and talks about comics which are uh, which are uh, uh, which are uh, uh, out right which are uh, by indian authors but in english let's say for example delhi kam right it's a very by biswajit bhosh right and then we have uh, amruta patil uh, the one on which uh, my uh, student adip troop worked on and then the river of stories uh, that is uh, by urjit shain and the harappa files by sarnath banerji right and uh, some others even better wordless comics like moon words right let me Uh, write it uh, for you moon words by appu pen and hush by prathik thomas and rajiv ipe however some other text that he mention in his book do not fit the title's keywords graphic novel and the obliterary journal volume that came out in 2012 and uh, uh, pau an anthology and the side that side restoring partition right you see this side that side uh, that is a i mean movie is also available this side that side and then that was edited by biswajit ghosh are essentially graphic anthologies and although bhimayana experience of untouchability right this is a wonderful uh, book uh, to talk about untouchability right bhimayana by sri divya natarajan and yes anand is considered to be a graphic novel the publisher Naina humbly calls it India's top-selling graphic book, published in Telugu, Tamil, Hindi, Marathi, Kannada, Malayalam, French, Korean, and Spanish. So you may here see that I just showed you that if you want to enter into uh, Indian comics, right, and you want to trace the history, as I have. Uh, constantly warned you that it is almost impossible for each one of us to find out a linear history of uh, indian comics if we do that will be an attempt of homogenization right and we all supposed to stay away from the homogenization but i gave you almost 15 examples of the work produced in english and i also suggested you that uh, Uh, in each language malayalam telugu tamil bangla like the comics are available our job is to see and understand that how are they working what is their function right so this is the argument that we have to make and we will uh, keep looking at it and interestingly part is that as we see the novels right as we look at the novels as we look at uh, short stories are uh, talking about dalit identity all let's say a tribal identity all let's say untouchable identity in the same way even in english comics books and graphic novels are available who are exploring the queer sexualities all let's say untouchabilities 
so on and so forth. So, right. So, you see that unfortunately they are not taken into the seriously, they, they are not taken uh, seriously by the literature department, or as English department. However, they have a lot to contribute to the discipline or to department itself, right. So, we are not supposed to limit them or corner them somewhere, right. So, moving ahead with the slides now, if you look at it, on your screen, what you will notice that these Bhimayana and this side, that side, I mean this side, that side is extremely interesting about the partition, right. So, a new way to look at it and I am sure that I am suggesting you to go and read it. Pickenayers admit in the book that he prefers the term graphic narrative over the graphic novel just like Henry Shute, who states that in graphic narrative, the substantial length implied by novel remains intact, but the term shifts to accommodate moods other than fiction. A graphic narrative is a book length work in the medium of a comics, which may uh, also be non-fiction or anthology for that matter. So, the book is not about the evolution of a graphic novel form in India, but rather about the representation of history in select Indian graphic narratives, which in his own words are increasingly central to the canon of uh, Indian writing in English. And the book intentionally excludes the superhero comics or the one dealing with mythological tales like Adi Parva by Amruta Patil. I highly recommend you to go through this book, right? Adi Parva by Amruta Pandey. This is a wonderful uh, way, right? If you look at the Adi Parva, I will not talk you talk to you in details about the Adi Parva, but interestingly, this book Adi Parva is about right uh, Indian mythologies, right? How Indian mythologies are being discussed by Amruta Patel through the comic medium, right? So so far, uh, uh, like to access the myths. It is not always we have to watch uh, certain episodes on this uh, on the television, but there is a something new coming to us, and it is a wonderful way to see that how comic medium like what is the treatment, what is the treatment of the comic medium to our myths and histories, right? And uh, uh, the perfect example that we have to examine this is Amrita Patil's Adi Parva, right? So, in fact, Amrita Patil's corpus is really interesting and uh, you can uh, read once, right. So, look at the slides again and what you see on the slide that it is not only uh, 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 Adi Parva by Amrita Patil, but Graphic India's Devi, 18 Days, Ramayana 392 or iconic Amar Chitra Katha books, right. And hence does not put forth any argument about the term graphic novel itself, what it stands for. So, see, one of the important argument that Pekinari is making in his book that uh, I am not going to call it as a graphic novel, but rather uh, he is trying to call it as a graphic narrative. And in fact, uh, he also uh, explaining his argument with the examples that is available. Right, let us say for example, uh, Amar Chitrakatha, Adi Parva and so forth. Right, so look at the slides and next slide if you notice, right. So, what you see that E. Dawson Varghese, right, I already talked about in the introduction of uh, uh, this lecture and uh, uh, she has written a very wonderful book, Visuality and Identity in Post Millennial Indian Graphic Narratives. Interestingly, you see. She also does not say novel, right. She does not say Indian graphic narrative. She says, sorry, she does not say Indian graphic novel. She says Indian graphic narratives by E. Dawson Warbees, right. So, uh, her aim in this book is to explain the relationship between readers' experience of uh, post millennial Indian graphic novels, right. Look, look at this post millennial. Indian graphic uh, uh, novels as I am saying, not I am using the narrative just for convenience sake. Some of the historic contingencies of a vision, visualization and depiction in India and the new types of a plot and a form emerging to show stories about 
contemporary Indian life and memory in Indian graphic novels asking. Let me uh, put this question uh, for you. So, give me a second because I would like to post this question on your screen. How do patterns of a power and visuality intermiss, right? Intermiss in the India of today, right? This is the question uh, I am putting it forward you which you are supposed to explain also to understand how do patterns of uh, power and visuality uh, intermiss in the India of today, right? So, uh, Dawson Varghese uh, writes, right? Dawson Varghese writes that she is not a concerned with Indian comic uh, in this book establishing a distinction between comics and graphic novels in India that is increasingly evidenced by her argument and insights as the book progresses. Rather, the book is concerned with the emergence of a new and often dissonant relationship between Indian graphics novels and the characteristics of visualization in India. She argues that Indian comics generally reinforce and reiterate. Hence, the book's discussion of the approach to depiction taken in Amar Chitra Katha, like that is how we translate immortal uh, uh, picture stories in Hindi, the popular and world famous Indian comics reprising religious and mythical plots since uh, uh, 1967, right? Uh, only to exemplify an Indian conception of a vision in which the sacred, numinous and pretentious is often actively co-present with everything seen. The sight of a depiction of a deity, even of a politician or a brand of a washing powder influences not only the viewer's relationship with the subject, but also adjudicates the auspiciousness or otherwise or the viewers current situation. In the case of a viewing depiction of de deities, vision is conceived as a reciprocal exchange in which the viewer is also seen by the God via the image, seeing in Sanskrit darshan, right? And his reciprocal exchange qualifies the actor of a seeing and renders it fortunate for the viewer. In the sense, it could be argued that reading the visual narrative depiction in Indian comics can be considered to be a contribution of the well-being of the Indian reader or rather certain types of a depiction have become nominal in India. Seeing this type of depiction is thought of as a contributing to well-being, right? So, in this book, the idea of a culturally pervasive darshan in Amar Chitra Katha is released in their formal characteristics focusing on the properties of the style in which they are drawn with bright color ways, clear strong lines and intricate often pattern detail. This identification of a correspondence between depiction considered to be auspicious, right, to be auspicious and particular type of a formal properties develop in the book into close reading as a method of a determining the characteristics of both normative ideas of Indian vision and subsequently the dissenting vision of Indian graphic novelist. So, one of the uh, uh, notion, right, uh, one of the notion of auspicious vision is located and affirmed, realized in the example of the both Amar Chitrakatha and historic depiction of the state. Doshan Varghese, I mean, uh, uh, says the one, constructed detailed rationale for the identification of visual metaphors. Power relationship, political initiative and psychological conditions are deduced from aspects of the formal properties of the graphic novel in view in which her personal reading substantiate the book's central thesis that Indian graphic novel index uh, sent by providing inauspicious narrative depiction of a suppressed marginal or taboo experience which are antithetical to normative Indian visions or visualization and depiction of India. So, 
Thus, the method of a close reading acts to structure the book's analysis around Dawson's work, his own experience as a critical reader. In a very few instances, does the book look beyond this personal reading experience to understand the broader social structure of readership or the visual readership in India, or to reveal the historical contingency of previously accepted knowledge, practices, and explanation. Even the idea and practice of a darshan related to the inauspicious vision of the Indian graphic novels in a view is approached through a personal reading of identified formal properties in both comics and graphic novels. The experience of other readers and observation made about the significance of reading to them is largely absent. Despite the wider significance of historic increases and decreases in Indian literacy, the influence of economic class as well as caste and religion, the status of urban and rural reading up and the impact of a foreign genre such as manga and digital media since the millennium. An exception to this is provided in the book's analysis of the transformed social status in the style of a, a Pratham Gone drawing derived from vernacular tradition of a visual storytelling as building decorations in Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. Daushan Varghese notes that Byam Byam Natarajan and Navayana, author of the 2012 graphic novel Bhimayana's experience of untouchability. So, a story in which the central character moves from a marginal and peripheral position to an empowered and central one. To do this, they utilize the Pardham Gond style. Let me write it for you. All right. Uh, Pradham Gond style. So, uh, this is style precisely because the style itself has undertaken a parallel social journey in which this status has been increasingly raised from tribal art to gallery art with all of the changes in types of attention and significance that such a social transformation entails. So, visuality and identity in post-millennial Indian graphic narrative is a timely addition to scholarship to the emergence of a subgenre of Indian graphic novel. Although, to although its resil uh, resilience on methods of a close reading somewhat limits the scope of the book's analysis, it provides a coherent introduction to the graphic novel in view, a detailed analysis of the ways in which the stories of inauspicious experience that is suppressed marginal or taboo experience uh, challenges normative ideas of India by disturbing a pervasive category of uh, uh, Indian uh, uh, vision, right. So, to sum up, right, what I have been talking about in the context of uh, uh, India, right. So, what, what we are supposed to realize when we are looking at visuality at the one hand and identity at the another hand. What we notice with this that how with the help of a visuals, right, how with the help of a visuals identity is being shaped. So, talking about a certain Amachitra Katha or some books, you see that certain pictures depicted on uh, it, let us say for example, if the some god and goddess picture. Uh, is project, uh, it depicted on the pages. Interestingly, what we look at it, we do not look at it just as a simple book. It is for us a religious book which has to be shown respect. So, let us say for example, uh, Amachitra Katha is something very famous for the one particular reason is that it has directly to do with our cultural moralities. So, that is a one. Second point interestingly, I recall when I was in Madhya Pradesh, and I visited certain places, I saw certain paintings, certain gold style painting on the walls that was made. So, that style was also used to uh, talk about, to write the comics books. So, here you see that comics and culture are very uh, tight together, right? They are tightly uh, tied together. So, the experiment is not something uh, as an artist, but something uh, artist in the sense of a comic artist, but artist in the sense of that is being done outside in the painting uh, on the wall or to uh, stitch something when you make a painting. That kind of a character or that kind of a painting was available or was being used by other writers on uh, 
the pages or to produce a comic book so which is why if you see uh, 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 the uh, uh, if you see these uh, kind of uh, uh, comic books of level in hindi or bengali or let's say punjabi or let's say uh, malayalam language or let's say in telugu language or in the tamil language so they are more to do uh, with the culture in which they are being produced and it has to tie with and in fact you see that certain comics books which we have been reading and we have been seeing because it has it is being used for a pedagogic purpose and second the idea that visuality and identity so here also that what kind of uh, visual landscapes right are produced in these comics books it uh, directly connects with our cultural identity right so keep this in mind when i move to the next slides right so look at the select next slide and you interestingly see the uh, point that i'm making right the point i'm making that carlin maclean's interdisciplinary study of a premier comic book right a series in india let's say amar chitrakatha that is something like ack that was a founded in 1967 masterfully engaged in three related projects of import of art history and for south asian studies so first you see this is a, a carline uh, maclean's book india's immortal comic books why it is a immortal that is exactly what i have been explained to you you see that god king and other heroes right so here when there is a cartooning or there is a picture of a god or as a king on our pages it seems to us that it is talking about the history it seems to us that it is talking about the myths it seems to us that it has something to do with our cultural history or political history or let's say religious history right so that is why this book look at the slides again if you see that uh, uh, carlis maclean if you look at the slide india's immortal comic books god kings and other heroes right so see what she does uh, with this right uh, her book investigate the reception of a popular visual culture the global transformation of images and visual literacy right what does it investigate her book is investigating the reception of a popular visual culture and global transmission of image and visual literacy the tension between canonized religious text and the production of images the appropriation of a high art or nationalist causes for a, for popular audiences and the struggle to put text and image together on a page in the service of an entertaining narrative right and what is the second main idea that we see in her book is she courageously takes on the issue of a communal conflict in india right communal conflict in india addressing the presentation of hindu and islamic topic and historical figure in ack with nuance and clarity and offer a model for uh, those addressing similar examples of religious conflict iconoclasm and cultural wars in south asia and elsewhere that is the second important argument right was made now third she highlights the representation she highlights the representation of women and goddesses right uh, in ack uh so repertoire such that reader comes to understand uh, the problematic gendering embedded with the production of india's national identity the book is therefore a welcome addition to the growing literature on women gender and nationalism so see what i'm talking about that if you look at the maclean's book and uh, she has done a research where uh, she is talking about uh, gender issues she is talking about nationalism and she also talks about the communal classes so you see 
that whenever we are working on Indian English in like Indian Indian writing in English, so what we do, we are looking at the gender, we are looking at the political classes, we are looking at the communal problems, we are looking at the other sexual issues. So uh, her book, in fact, does the same thing by looking at that how certain uh, narrative, right? Uh, how certain narratives uh, are in such a way that uh, uh, that that talks about the gendered. Uh, problems in India, it talks about the communal cases and the nationalism. So, therefore, it is not only limited to us in thinking about that these books are a pious book or only for the uh, only for uh, the fun or entertainment sake, but rather it adds something more to us and it is talking something more which is a very uh, important issues in our everyday life, right. So, look at the slides again and you notice that. Uh, that Maclean begins with the people who read the comics, right? Uh, rather than focusing on the comic as object for study, entering the project from the point of view of ACK's artists or writers, rather than situating the comics in the last four decades of Indian history or art history, she uh, instead draws her readers into the book via the people who grew up on ACK comics. As a result, MacLean convincingly demonstrates the significance of ACK for the production of India's national identity. So here you see one of the important uh, claim made by the author is that national identity, right, is being saved, was saved. Uh, on uh, one of the important uh, important uh, thing that contributed in shaping the idea of nationalism is ACK, right? Amarjit Katha Suri. So, so th these comic books is not only meant for reading for the entertainment, but also you see when the India was emerging as a nation state, these book help to produce India as a nation state in what forms that is what you have to look at. So, look at the slides again and see that uh, I mean uh, as a result what we see uh, that like in fact Maclan is uh, uh, looking at uh, how uh, she draws her reader into the book by the people who grew up in AC, ACK comics. As a result Maclan convincingly demonstrate the significance of ACK for the production of India's national identity through the depiction and canonization of key religious and historical figures. So, the introduction also provides important insights into her field work as uh, she describes how she walked through mountains of ACK's uh, fan mail, interviewed writers, artists and Anantapai, the founder of ACK on multiple occasions and chatted at bookstalls in Mumbai with vendors and buyers of a comic book books. So, you see, you could see the kind of ethnography that she did, the kind of effort that she put in to understand that what ACK did to people, right? And she interviewed, she met vendors and those people who are uh, uh, who are uh, uh, who are purchasing and selling this. Any any other opening would signal particular discipline. Uh, Maclan's innovative introduction set the stage for her strong interdisciplinary approach, right. So, subsequent chapters draws the theme she highlights in the introduction. ACK's uh, role in raising awareness of India's diverse history and culture while articulating a unified set of national heroes, heroines and historical figure, right. So, uh, what she was doing, like what she did in a book that she looked at ACK's role in awareness of India's cultural and diverse history and she also looked at how it has articulated a unified set of national heroes, heroines, historical figures and ACK's active participation in the production of uh, Indian middle class identity and ACK's interviewing of religion 
into the formation of a national and class identity against a backdrop of a tension between secular education and a rising Hindu fundamentalism. It is a strike. So, so truly the hidden gem of MacLean's book is its engagement with the gender and uh, representation of a women in uh, goddess. Uh, I mean, re representation of a women and goddess with ACK comics. Something not signaled in the title, but permeating the entire book. Right. So, what interestingly we notice uh, in her uh, uh, book. First thing that see her book is extremely significant when it has to talk about interdisciplinary approach. As we know interdisciplinary simply suggest that, uh, that through the comics she is picking up the object from the outside, right? Picking up the object from the outside and explaining and talking on it through the comic medium, right? So something that may be uh, not the study, object of the study of particular discipline but it has been uh, to throw a different light on it. Uh, people from different department are choosing it as an object uh, study, object of a study and with its uh, methodology, with its a uh, different way and with a different approach, it is being applied on it, right. So, this is a something new approach that we see uh, in her book. Second thing that we find that uh, uh, like she also politicizes that it is not Hindu gods and goddesses are projected in a very innocent way, but rather what kind of a national imaginary or cultural imaginary has to be produced in the minds of a young blood. That was a purpose through which certain comics book came into the existence. Right. So, here you see that also uh, when we are noticing that upper class is coming into the picture, lower class are also coming into the picture and then middle class also coming into the picture, then certain identity is being shaped by this ACK series. So, middle class identity uh, was shaped or let's say produced by this particular art. In fact, that the formation of a national and class identity uh, was taken into the account in the background of a secular education and, 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 and this is the time when we see lot of a fringe group were emerging, right. So, when the lot of a fringe group were emerging and then we are noticing that these fringe group are possibly is a result of certain comic books coming into the existence. Let us say for example that how we get to know someone as a national hero, right. Let me give an example before I elaborate on it, right. I have been uh, talking in the classrooms that what kind of image you want to produce in the minds of uh, students, that kind of image you have to circulate uh, through visuals. Like I am sure that you all have witnessed uh, and seen uh, Ram's picture or Hanumanji's picture, right. And you see that uh, when there is a, I mean, understand the context in which I am speaking, when we see that there is a war like a tension between our border countries, then we see that religious uh, examples are being uh, floated, religious icons who, who are well built, right, the muscles and very atrocious. I am sure that they are being circulated so that it can uh, present a kind of uh, 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 imagination, it, it, it can present the way we are supposed to think about this particular condition. I still remember when there was a uh, final uh, match between uh, World Cup uh, final match between India and Sri Lanka, obviously it was nonetheless like a world war. So, what happened that Dhoni's image was being circulated as if he is projecting like a Rama, right. So, uh, and Sri Lanka's hero was projected as if he is like a Ravana and the other uh, people uh, who were associated with uh, uh, Sri Lanka's player, they were projected as if they are uh, like uh, Sri Lanka coming, so like Sri Lanka's uh, players are as if they are uh, Rawat's army. And here, uh, uh, here we see Dhoni was projected as a Ram and other people were 
uh, Rama's army. So here you see that there is a two kind of a tension was shown. One side uh, Dhoni was shown as a Ram and uh, uh, and uh, uh, Sri Lanka's uh, batsmen were shown like a Ravana's player. So you see the kind of a tension that was a uh, built. It was uh, built with a particular purpose that a kind of a uh, uh, nationalism wanted to be shown in the minds of uh, people of India, right? So which means that it is it is it, it is no more now just a cricket match, right? It is like a good versus evil. It's like a fight between Ram versus Ravana. So you see these kind of a cultural icon are constantly used to create a particular kind of a feeling, let's say national feeling, religious feeling, cultural feeling, political feeling in our mind. So what I'm just simply, why I gave you this particular example, there are n number of example that are available and you can see them, you can use them, you can understand them. But the point that I'm specifically making that in this book, this is a way to look at it that how middle class identity was shaped. When I'm saying middle class identity, what I mean by identity? Identity means the kind of a feeling that you should have, a kind of a desire that you should have, a kind of a cultural behavior that you should have, a kind of a attitude that you should have. So this was being generated and regulated by certain comics books and with which middle class people were very much associated and related. Right? So the, this is a particular idea that when we are reading a book, when we are reading a comics which is very popular, right? in fact as I showed you that religious symbols were used in our comic book and that is what we have to take into our mind for considering that why is it so? Why religious symbols are being used in the comic books? Why are cultural icons are being used in, a, in our comics? It because who is reading it? They want to shape your imagination. They want to shape your identity. They want you to behave in a particular fashion. I write. So this is what we need to explore. And this is why I say this was a very timely book that intervened into our cultural imaginary. All right. Or contribution to the comic studies. However, this is not the end. We will look up these chapters. And we are going to understand what else she has to say has to contribute in the field of Indian comic studies. I'll stop this lecture here and I'll request you guys that certain strips, look at certain panels and read and write. So for now, I'll uh, 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 say you goodbye. So, uh, what I left today will continue it. All right, take care. Have a good time.